The Southern Maryland Oyster Cultivation Society began about three years ago, and our goal is to raise oysters for people to deposit them on the bottom of local creeks. We're fortunate enough that our program dovetails beautifully with what the state is doing and wants to do with local oyster gardeners. We have about 100 members, most of whom are actively participating in raising oysters at their docks. After they've raised the oysters for about a year or so, we then put the oysters on bottoms that we've prepared with shell so that the oysters survive. I've been on the bay since I was four years old and finally lucky enough to move down here. As part of Smox, I wanted to give something back and I thought I could really contribute to restoring the bay. And we got one! Our mission, really, is to save the bay one oyster at a time. Each oyster can filter approximately 55 gallons of water a day. Our goal is if we can get enough oysters, we get a critical mass of oysters in these back creeks, we'll be able to filter this water once a week and we think we might be able to hit that objective in about two years. We found that instead of being able to raise 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 oysters in one box that's a little bigger than three feet by five feet, we can raise 5,000 oysters in one location. I have three generations of floats for cultivating oysters. One are the MGO cages, which are currently being used in high energy wave environments. The Taylor floats consist of three bags with roughly 200 oysters per bag in there, and they need to be manually flipped, and they stay on the surface, and that's another way of cultivating oysters. And the around cylindrical, we call them smox boxes. What we believe is that absolutely the best way and lowest maintenance way of raising oysters at your dock. The Maryland Grows Oysters program donated 350,000 oysters to our organization last year. These were provided free to anyone with a oyster cultivation device. These are what are in the rotation devices that I have. In large scale oyster reproduction programs, uh, what they often do is take the spat on shell, the young oysters attached to shell, and simply dump them directly onto the bottom of creeks and rivers in the bay. The trouble is these young oysters are far more vulnerable in that environment to a range of stresses, whereas our growers keep them where they get an ample supply of food and they're likely to have more oxygenated water. Smox depends very much on volunteers. They can help with administrative matters and simply making the organization run. They can raise oysters at their dock. But the place where, to my surprise, people find the most satisfying activity is actually getting in the water, getting down wet and dirty, moving the shells as we need to deposit them in, bringing oysters to the sites and emptying the smox boxes, refilling the cages, moving the boxes back to the docks. People can volunteer their boats, they can volunteer their time. We very much appreciate their help in whatever area they want to help us. I talk about smocks whenever I have a chance. They're just a, a well-run organization. They're doing some really neat things and succeeding at it where a lot of people haven't succeeded before. I would recommend this to anyone who has a pier, a dock, because the more oysters we can get to grow, the more filtration will take place one creek at a time, and the improvement in the bay will then proceed.